Greetings everyone and welcome to the International Business Management course. I will be your instructor for the course. Throughout this course, we will learn the core concepts related to how to manage the business process from an international perspective. For the first lecture, we will follow the following uh, topics. We will describe the key concepts in international business. We will go over and understand how international business differs from domestic business. And lastly, we will identify the main participants involved in the international business management process. Before we begin, let's first take some time to start or to understand why internationalization has become such an important element in our lives. I think as customers, we can all um, agree that internationalization has, been a natural, has become a natural part of our daily lives. Internationalization starting from the cuisines that we are now eating to the entertainment selections that we are watching or, or, or so on have tremendously changed due to internationalization. One platform that has been categorized as a global phenomena is Instagram. I think that we can all agree that Instagram is definitely a global phenomena that has portrayed and exemplified globalization of businesses and the converging lifestyles which we are now seeing worldwide have become very similar. We as Egyptians are now using the same products as other customers in other parts of the world. Instagram has more than 700 million active monthly users, which exemplifies again the concept of internationalization and globalization and how it's definitely trending uh, nowadays. Also, Instagram is available in 33 languages and enjoys a massive following worldwide. And this is also another example of how organizations now, in order to internationalize, are forced to adapt to foreign markets in order to avoid missing opportunities in uh, foreign countries with a huge uh, market base. Also, 80% of users of uh, Instagram users live outside the firm's home country, which is the US. And I think this is one example that signifies the importance of internationalization, along with many other examples, such as uh, McDonald's, which has now conquered countries all over the world, Apple uh, Corporation, and there could be more uh, examples that we can give that signify the importance of globalization and how businesses can start in one country but yet uh, make a huge uh, penetration in other countries all over the world as we as customers are witnessing nowadays. Also, Instagram uses foreign direct investment to establish offices around the world. And foreign direct investment is actually just one type of entry strategies that uh, when you are internationalizing, uh, this could be one method to enter foreign uh, countries, uh, along with other multiple different methods that you could use, which we will cover throughout this course. Uh, and lastly, Instagram illustrates how converging lifestyles have become, as we were stating in the first point, consumers' needs and wants have become very uh, similar uh, from people from different types or from different countries all over the world are now becoming very unified. So customers in Egypt are demanding the same products or the same services as customers in the European market or in the US market and so on. And this is one of the, uh, we could say it's one of the advantages or one of the consequences of internationalization and the global phenomena. And therefore, entrepreneurships are facilitating the emergence of global enterprises and making use of the communication technologies and how they have massively removed the barriers of internationalization and, and, and have made it possible for uh, domestic or local businesses to internationalize. Accordingly, Let's first begin by differentiating and going over the main differences between international business and domestic business. And I think some of these uh, points are pretty obvious and I think most of us already understand these points. And uh, the obvious is uh, that internationalization um, 
international business when it compared to domestic business is mainly different in terms of the set of activities that are being conducted. So one, one the first point is that uh, the obvious actually point is that international business is the business that is conducted across national boundaries. So when I cross national boundaries, this is automatically me engaging in internationalization. Then another distinctive feature is that international business in comparison to domestic business uses distinctive business methods. So in other words, I as a local business, if certain methods are be successful in my local market, it does not necessarily mean that they will succeed in foreign markets, which means that I have to adapt my business methods according to the foreign country that I am trying to enter or I am trying to conduct business in. Therefore, in order to do so, we have to understand and evaluate the different environments of, among the uh, countries which we are trying to enter. So we have to understand the terms of culture, the differences in languages, the different political and legal systems that are there in, in foreign markets. We have to gather information related to the economic situation, the infrastructure in the foreign market, and of course, other factors that could come as helpful to our internationalization process. So to simplify, it's definitely very important to understand uh, when thinking of internationalization, we have to gather information about the foreign market and these are categorized as the four major types of risks in, in any international business management process and these risks we will actually cover in details in uh, lecture two. Before we move on, let's first talk about the nature of international business. Now, what is international business exactly? To simplify the idea of international business, we can say that international business is all value-adding activities, including sourcing, manufacturing, and even marketing activities that are performed on an international level, or in other words, performed in international locations. As long as I cross national borders, this automatically becomes a form of internationalization. Also, when engaging in international business, we have to understand the concept of international trade. So what is international trade? International trade is no longer restricted to the movement of commodities or products anymore. Now we have to know that international trade involves the movement of products, it, the movement of services, capital, technology, know-how, and even labor. And this is also, again, these are some of the consequences of the fact that internationalization have removed many barriers that used to occur uh, in previous times. Also, international business means that firms internationalize through entering foreign markets. And as we were stating earlier, when you're entering a foreign market, we have different entry strategies or different entry methods that we can use in order to enter this foreign market. And these strategies we will take in details again further on throughout the uh, course. Some obvious ones that I think we are all familiar with is exporting and foreign direct investment, which are the most famous types of uh, entry strategies that many uh, businesses use to enter foreign markets easily. Okay, so again, let's go over the key concepts in international business. Again, what is international business? As we were just stating, international business, very simply speaking, it's the performance of these activities or these transactions across national borders, as we were just stating. Okay, so internationalization is the step or a ladder to globalization. So what is globalization? Globalization of markets is the ongoing, it means continuously um, trying or uh, reaching for economic integration and growing interdependencies of countries worldwide. So obviously the more countries you enter and the more countries you start uh, uh, serving, the more international uh, your business becomes. And of course, this is, as I said, it's the ladder to globalization. And this is the uh, vision of any uh, uh, firm or any uh, business is to reach the level of globalization where they, uh, they serve many uh, countries across the world. 
international trade is part of uh, international business where it's we are exchanging the products or services as stated earlier across national borders and this is usually done through exporting and importing um, as you must know other key concepts that need to be established when we are talking about the management of businesses on an international level is exporting and importing. What are these? These are entry strategies as we explained earlier. We have multiple en uh, entry strategies and one of the entry strategies that usually are involved in the international trade process is importing and exporting. So what is exactly meant by importing and exporting? Exporting is where we sell products or services to customers located abroad. So I am producing certain products in my home country and I will actually export these products so I can reach as many foreign uh, customers as much as I can. And of course, this generates huge opportunities for businesses and also for economic integration and economic uh, development as well. Uh, so therefore, again, exporting is the sale of products or services to customers located abroad from a base in the home country or a third country uh, and this is has multiple beneficials beneficials for uh, for businesses starting from improving or increasing the business market share to economic growth for economies and then we have the second uh, component in the trade process, which is importing. Now, importing is the process of procurement of these products. So it's vice versa, where I, as a country, I am receiving uh, certain um, products where, for example, maybe I have scarcity in these products or in this material, so therefore I will import these products. So importing means uh, procurement of products or services from suppliers located abroad for consumption in the home country or a third uh, country. And a, ma a, a major example that imports certain products are car manufacturers and here in, the, uh, in your book you will see Toyota as an example where they import many of their parts from China and manufacture it in Japan as uh, to, to, to take advantage of cheaper raw material or cheaper labor and so on. Another key concept in international business is international investment and international portfolio investment. So what is meant by international investment? We were stating earlier that internationalization or international trade is no longer restricted to commodities or products and services only. Now we have different components that are exchanged in the international trade process. So in order to understand this, we have to first understand the concept of international investment. What exactly is international investment? It is the transfer of assets to another country or the acquisition of assets in that country. So I am fully investing in a foreign market. I am putting money in this foreign market. This is part of any international business management process. Another component that I have to take into consideration is the international portfolio investment. What's meant by international portfolio investment is related to the passive ownership of foreign securities. So the stock markets, the bonds that I have in foreign countries, how I allocated my capital resources in foreign countries. Accordingly, what are the different flows in, uh, involved or available in any international business process? We will find that these uh, four types of flows are involved or are available in every uh, business process or every international business process, which are knowledge, trade and products, trade and services, and direct investment. In order for me to internationalize my business, I will find myself, I will have transactions, financial transactions. So therefore it is investment. We, I am investing in this foreign market and I'm operating and entering this foreign market so I can um, uh, increase my business operations and I can internationalize and enter new markets and take advantage of uh, increasing my market share and so on. And as we said, the trade in products and services. So what will I be, what is the product or what is the service that I will be providing in this foreign market? And of course, knowledge. The transfer of knowledge is one of the major components or one of the major flows involved in any international business process. 
because the more international businesses become, the more knowledge they gain. And this is why usually when we are engaging in international business, we always say that uh, the more international businesses become, the more leverage they have in the market. As if, uh, to simplify it, the more international or the more countries I am operating in, the more knowledge and experience I will gain. Therefore, this will increase my leverage in the market of experience and so on. Because as we said, every market I am trying to enter, I have to collect a massive amount of data about and I have to collect so much information and put so much effort into understanding this foreign market to avoid risk. So therefore, as we stated, the, the more international, the more knowledge you gain. As you are evaluating uh, multiple countries, you start to you begin to understand their different cultures, their different know-hows, their different strategies, and so on. So therefore, the, this will Im highly increase and improve the knowledge for organizations. Okay, so who are the participants in international business? Now that we understand the concept of international business and we understand the importance of international business, almost all organizations now or all businesses don't want to remain at a domestic or a local state. Every dream for a business is, uh, that starts as a local business is to enhance and to improve their operations in order to become international for hopes of becoming global one day. So who are the participants involved in the international business process? Mainly, I think you will know some of them, which are the multinational enterprises, and these are the known as the MNEs. The MNEs are the large companies with substantial resources. Usually these companies are known for having a massive amount of employees and a massive amount of resources and they perform various businesses activities through a network of subsidiaries or branches across the world. They are affiliated with a home country, but when they are engaging in business, they engage it on an international level and they have the resources and the, the capacity to do this. The second type is the small and medium sized enterprises, which are also known as SMEs. The SMEs are typically companies with 500 or fewer employees. So their resources are not as, um, are not as massive as the MNEs. They are somewhat limited and therefore they comprise uh, over 90% of the firms in most countries and the SMEs usually engage in international business, not yet at a global perspective like M uh, the MNEs. A third type of participant in international business is born global firms. And I think recently or nowadays we have been seeing uh, many of these firms which are born as global, such as Instagram, Facebook. These are platforms that were born to target the world. They are born, uh, this is why it's called born global, because as soon as they begin, they begin on an international level. So these firms are known as a young entrepreneurial SME that undertakes substantial international business at or near its founding. More uh, participants in international business are non-governmental organizations and the non-governmental organizations are those of which are uh, known as non-profit organizations. And these organizations regularly uh, conduct uh, cross-border activities. They pursue special causes and serve as advocates for social issues, education, politics, and research. And I think we have recently been seeing uh, many of those where these uh, organizations are done for good causes. And some major examples are the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Foundation and the British Welcome Trust, uh, which both support health and educational initiatives, and they promote people to, uh, to fund them or to uh, donate uh, some of their money to support these non-profit organizations. Also, another famous non-profit organization is 
CARE, which is actually focuses on international, it's an international nonprofit organization and it's dedicated to reducing poverty. And I think we have seen uh, massive uh, marketing done for these organizations to promote people to donate and to do good and to enhance uh, countries who are severe, uh, who are suffering severely due to poverty and weak economic situations. So all of these nonprofit organizations are partaking in a, a huge part of uh, or conducting major international business transactions. Even if they're not doing it from a business essence, they are still engaging in international trade activities, which is again part of international business management. So for today's first lecture as an introduction, um, we covered the core concepts that you have to know as a student when we are discussing uh, international business management, what are the core concepts you have to understand. Also, we spoke about the differences between international business management and domestic business management, and we spoke about the main participants who are involved in any international business process. And, and we will continue with lecture two, which uh, will analyze and severely examine the four types of risks that any international business manager needs to understand and evaluate in order to avoid falling uh, or um, being impacted by these four risks. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.